Nestled alongside the River Thames, the city of London is beautiful. Its history, cultural offerings, and welcoming spirit make it the most visited city in the world. Getting from Gatwick Airport to our hotel was easy, with lots of shuttle buses going into town. The best place to start your visit is the London Eye. It's a giant Ferris wheel that opened 12 years ago. I recommend buying an express pass in advance to avoid long lines. It costs a little extra, but it's worth it. The wheel moves slowly, taking 30 minutes to go all the way around, so you have plenty of time to take photos. At over 443 feet high, it's a great way to get your bearings and figure out where to go next. This is the tallest Ferris wheel in all of Europe, so it's no surprise that almost 4 million people come to ride the eye every year and get a bird's eye view of the city. Getting a very good view of Big Ben right now. It's beautiful. Big Ben is tough to miss. Located at the north end of the Palace of Westminster, the clock tower holds the largest four-faced chiming clock in the world. The hour hand is nine feet long, and the minute hand is 14 feet long. This is an exciting summer for Londoners, and you can feel the energy in the air. First, Queen Elizabeth celebrates 60 years on the throne with her Diamond Jubilee, and then the Summer Olympics. So how do the locals feel about the world arriving on their doorstep? just delighted to have people coming and, and, and experiencing it. So it's kind of half and half. I'd say half of London is probably going to go and lie on a beach somewhere, and the rest are going to be here, very happy to welcome people. During the games, residents are being encouraged to ride their bikes to work to avoid gridlock. I think the media has been really focused on, you know, the, the disruption in the travel and the crowds of people and the expense of everything's going to be more expensive because, you know, people are making money off of the Olympics, um, which is a shame. I think it'd be nice just to kind of get behind it. There's cautious optimism that the influx of visitors will benefit local business. Wimbledon not far from here for the tennis and we've got uh, I think the fencing of the Earl's Court which is not too far away. We'll probably see a few residual uh, bits and pieces, yeah. The city has a wonderful mix of old and new. You can still find working telephone booths on the sidewalks. Well, most of them are working. That's a urinal. <laughs> the most traditional English meal has to be fish and chips. Colin and I made that our first order. We toyed with taking on the locals in a game of darts. Thankfully, we decided against it. Back to the sights. The Tower of London is a historic castle where the crown jewels have been kept since 1303. Here you'll get an up-close look at the Imperial State Crown, which is adorned with 2,868 diamonds, 273 pearls, 17 sapphires, 11 emeralds, and 5 rubies. Yep, that's got to be heavy. You'll also find here the first star of Africa, now mounted at the top of the Sovereign Scepter. This is the largest flawless cut diamond in the world, weighing 530 carats. Not too far away is the Klink Prison Museum. It's built on the original site of the Klink Prison, which dates back to 1144, making it England's oldest lockup. Here you'll get to see the different types of torture devices that were used hundreds of years ago. It's disturbing, to say the least. Innocent, let me out. Every woman here is. <laughs> we make a break for it and continue to explore. Chinatown is bustling with tourists and stays open late to accommodate theater goers. Street performers have been entertaining crowds in Convent Garden since 1662. Piccadilly Circus is to London what Times Square would be to New York City. And it's normally very busy here, but because of the Olympics, it appears the whole world is here. We stood outside Buckingham Palace for a while, but sadly the Queen was not taking visitors. Remarkably though, I did run into Her Highness at a camera shop. Pleasure to meet you. Getting around this bustling metropolis is fairly easy. Because they drive on the other side of the road, there are reminders to look to your right at every crosswalk. The subway, known as the Tube, is the second longest metro system in the world. The iconic double-decker buses are plentiful, as are the old-style cabs. And you'll notice a lot of people riding blue and black bikes. 
You can rent them all around the city. You pay by the hour, and it's affordable. With the Union Jack flying proudly and the city looking polished, London is poised to take the top spot at the podium as an Olympic city once again.